Bizarre Brain Comics. <laughs> oh yeah. Ha yeah. Oh. Ha. Magnus of the Feral Horde here to tell you tales of daring do, swashbuckling, barbaric sword wielding heroes dealing death and destruction, sword and sorcery. Yes, this is going to be a tale of the greatest barbaric barbarian swordsman ever, along with the beautiful crimson-haired swordswoman, a living female hellion. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. The tale of Conan the Barbarian. Ooh. Ha, ha, ha. And welcome to Bizarre Brain Comics. <clears throat> Where I'd like to take a look at older comics, talk a little bit about the characters and creators, and then examine the stories and the art. Mm. Mm. And the one we're going to look at this time. is Conan the Barbarian in this Marvel Treasury Edition. The story of the Song of Red Sonia. Written by Roy Thomas and drawn by Barry Smith. Or if you prefer, Barry Windsor Smith. <clears throat> and, and see what the big book of knowledge has to say. <clears throat> of course, both characters are, are created by Robert E. Howard, the great pulp writer from the uh, 30s. By some considered to be possibly the best pulp fiction writer. And Conan the Barbarian, Son, Song of Red Sony by Roy Thomas and Barry Smith. And uh, this story was first appeared in uh, Conan the Barbarian number 24 in 1973 from Marvel Comics. And it, it was the last issue featuring Barry Smith art. Um, yeah, he, Barry Smith, has, uh, his style had been developing and he had been getting more detailed which made him slower and about in this time frame here um, the uh, uh, the title had had gone to a monthly publish uh, publication schedule and he was unable to continue uh, main and maintain the, the quality of his work and uh, and continue it with a monthly uh, a monthly deadline so Barry Smith, he's born in 1949. He's a British comic book artist and painter. And he became most associated with his work on Conan the Barbarian from 1970 to 73. And later for his, for his work on the Wolverine storyline Weapon X, which he wrote and drew, from what I, as if I remember correctly. And he was the creative director for Valiant Comics in the 90s when they revived the 60s uh, Gold Age characters. And then uh, did some various work through the through other publisher publishers, uh, such as Rune for Malibu and Wildstorm at Image Comics. And his first work uh, was published in the '67 and '68 uh, for Odom Press. I think that's a, a, a British publication uh, publisher. Then. He came to the U.S. Uh, to meet with Stan Lee and, due to his very Kirby-esque style, got the job on X-Men number 53. And uh, then he did some Daredevil, some Westerns, uh, Nick Fury. I know he 
uh, he did some um, some Khazar stories, Khazar, Lord of the Hidden Jungle stories. And then eventually uh, landing the uh, uh, the lead on Conan the Barbarian. Okay. Ah. Let's gird our loins and grab our should say grip our swords and head in into the the bowels of fury. The tales of sword and sorcery and Conan the Barbarian Song of Red Sonia Yeah and here yeah this is a big book. Uh I've showed it before when I when I showed all my uh, my tabloid sized books. That one, yeah, that was a long one. Um, she said, uh, <laughs> um, "This is a great, great cover illustration by John Buscema and Ernie Chan." And of course, this is this uh, when this was rep reprinted here. This was. Uh, during John Buscema's uh, tenure on the, the Conan the Barbarian title. You see another great Buscema illustration on the back cover. And um, Ernie Chan did a, a lot of the inks uh, on the uh, Conan stories. Uh, for Busima and he and uh, he did he has done several several stories that he uh, um, penciled as well as inked now unfortunately and and, and uh, from what I understand Busima uh, never liked Chan's Ernie Chan's um, inks on his pencils and I can I can see why now and it's not to say he's bad you see he's not he 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 was a wonderful artist himself but he, his style was was so strong that quite often, as happened in the case with a, a lot of the John Buscema art, that the uh, um, the the natural style of the penciler's work is completely or almost completely buried under the, the the strong stylization of, of Ernie Chan's inks, as happens here. If you, you'll have to kind of look at the face, like uh, uh, Conan's face, to, to really see um, the Buscema work. Uh, and also um, um, this image of, of Sonia, her face and and her figure, someone in her figure. Uh, you can you can tell that it's John Buscema. Otherwise, it, you would think it was just Ernie Chan. Okay, now, oh, I wanted to say, as I was saying, the, um, Barry Smith's, uh, art had really evolved during his tenure in just, just a couple of years on, uh, on Conan. Um, he started off being very Kirby-esque. In his style, so you, if you see the first few, first few ish, issues, that really looks uh, quite similar to what, what what Kirby might have have drawn, and then it very quickly started evolving, and he get got more detailed and just a more lovely. And as when I did the uh, uh, the well, I, I won't get into that. The uh, um, he did both the pencils and the inks. He got greater detail, greater. Uh, a more more beautiful line work, um, robust anatomy, and uh, like here, in just the, the two and a half or three years that he was working on on Conan, you see how the, his figure has gone from a, a, a somewhat more slender uh, figure from the first couple issues, which kind of makes sense because he was about seventeen or eighteen then, to um, like to here. And he has, uh, you can see a maturation in his face and figure. Uh, he, he's got it, gotten um, bulkier musculature. 
as the the figure uh, character would as as he matured. But but also get one of the something rare, which oh, you also happen to see here in, in this, is nipples on the on the male figure. They very especially at this time in comics, very very seldom showed nipples on a on the the chest of a of a male figure. So this is unusual here for with uh, uh, John Buscema. And you can see here in this one, it doesn't on the back. And usually he didn't show his show nipples. But this one, this does. And you'll see just the sheer beauty of, of uh, Barry Smith's art here. And you, there you see the ver splash panel, splash page. Quite often splash pages would, or splash panels would uh, hint at something in the story and not be the beginning of the story. But here, this is... The very beginning of the story, you see, see Red Sonia be, uh, before her uh, chainmail bikini phase. Uh, she had a chainmail shirt and just uh, uh, a bottom here, some bottoms here, and she didn't even have her her sandals on. She's dancing on on a table in a in a bub a, pu a bub a pub or a bar, a tavern, just having a good old time drinking with her with her warrior buds, and there is. Conan right in the forefront, and there you can quite clearly see the nipples on his chest, which at this time he uh, Barry Smith commonly commonly did. Okay, and at this point in the story, the character of Red Sonia was uh, was introduced in the the storyline just prior to this one in in the regular title. Um, and something of the vulture. I've forgotten the actual title of the story, which was an adaptation of a Robert E. Howard story, but it was not a Conan story. It's taken place five, six hundred years ago in some some battle, and and the character of Red Sonia was introduced uh, in that story. Uh, but she was supposed to be, you know, five or six hundred years ago. And so when they adapted the the story to a Conan story, putting her in the, in the Hyborian age, they changed the spelling of her name, but kept it the same. And, th and then she became very popular. And got eventually got a title of her own. So they're chanting, Sonia, Sonia. She dances there. This is in. They're all a bunch of mercenaries uh, working in this city that is being besieged by an, by an enemy army, uh, but just in a quiet spot. So while everyone's chanting Sonia, here's this guy, Big Jax. He said, "Beautiful, all the lovely, lovely detail." And but anyway, get this guy, Big Jax, who's also in the in the mer uh, mercenary. Troop. But he, I guess, he had recently had a uh, had a severe head injury, and he's now uh, on the his brain adult, and he's not too bright anymore. And he, but he's got a thing for for Sonia, and here he comes up, and he just grabs her. Conan tries to in intervene, and he says, "Come, we'll have a drink with Big Jacks." So Conan, <laughs> this now this guy, <laughs> even Conan is kind of. Could, would be intimidated by the sheer size and power of this fellow. Ooh, someone say fight? She, she objects to Conan intervening. I can fight my own fights. And that starts it. He he whacks Conan. Conan grabs a chair, whacks him. And then then the brawl begins. A standard barroom brawl. Uh, <laughs> everyone fighting everyone else. Uh, we've seen it in a million westerns. Yeah, while well, while well, everyone's fighting here, Conan and Sonia decide we better get the hell out of here before the before the city guard arrives and we're all thrown in the pokey. So they scamper out just in time to see the guard going in the other other entrance. And here you can see you can see all this beautiful detail. It's beautiful uh, uh, visual storytelling, panel to panel storytelling, and look the beauty of the, the the hair and the faces of these figures, and the detail in the the uh, in the male shirt that she's wearing, even in the the uh, 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 shrubbery in the background in here, it's all all wonderful. This oh, they got hot and sweaty from that fight, so they jump into the pool, pool there the at the fountain to cool off, and of course Conan he's well drunk. He snatched a couple uh, some some uh, wine jugs, thinking they're gonna ha they're gonna party alone. Look at that, that great face there. But she comes up without her male shirt. 
and he goes, well, what are you looking at? I said, just beautiful work there. She is playing him. She is playing him because she knows he wants her. <laughs> and she's being kind of standoffish, but she's still flirting, being flirtatious with him. But first, we got something else we got to do. And she, and uh, meanwhile, they're, everyone's being... But first, we got to get some horses. So while the guards are arresting everyone in the uh, in the bar, they're still uh, taking off with one of the horses. Uh, they get caught right in the act, so they can only get a chance to get one horse. And they take off together, taking the guards' horses. Now they go. This is a little interstitial. Has nothing to do with this story, but it is very be beautifully lettered and drawn. And we'll have another one later. Here we go to part two. Yes. They've got to do some thievery. What's this? At this tower. That's and but now it comes out. She maneuvered him. She picked him because he is a Sumerian. Sumer and Sumerians are known for their for their great climbing skills because of all the the rocky cliffs and stuff ar around their homeland that, uh, that they have to climb all the time. So she needs him to climb that tower and and then drop a. Uh, a rope for her to climb up so with the potential of of romance later smack she smacks him into the bushes and he gets too amorous gets him gets him to go up the up the wall and look at that face that great face and then hers too just a thing of beauty and all the detail in that tower well he's able to climb up the tower which few few people short of Spider-Man would be able to, to climb. He gets up there, lowers uh, lowers the rope to her, and they get up together. Okay. Because there's something here in this treasure vault. And look around. Oh, everything's just scattered around. All this treasure just scattered around everywhere. And she says, "There's something I need to find here. You go go out and and uh, keep watch for the guard." And he's willing to be maneuvered a little bit. But he's suspicious, right, rightly so. She looks around, looks around, and she finds what she's looking for, which is this tiara, a golden tiara of a serpent. Oh, it's so beautiful, and it's compelling. And she she grabs it and takes off. Meanwhile, Conan's out there uh, watching for the arrival of guards when, ee! she hears the, hears the screams, and then we have another interstitial, again, having nothing to do with this story, but very beautifully rendered. And lettered, and here we go, part three. And we see he rushes back, kind of rushes in, back into the treasure room, and sees Sonia. And, and something magical is happening. That golden tiara of a serpent is turning into a giant serpent in in real life. And she's she's uh, shouting this this chant: "Kanamaka Lajarama, blast you, Kanamaka Lajarama." It's not working. It's a giant serpent. Uh oh, something happening, and it goes right, right for Sonia. She's back to hell. She's manages to get out of the way, and then it goes for Conan because this is he. He's torn whether he should help her or leave her because this is stuff he didn't had wasn't uh, uh, planning on getting involved in. But he does. He rushes up, and first thing he does is shatter those fangs. Of this serpent, now, and it even mentions here this. This is not something natural, obviously, and therefore it has fangs and uh, and venom like like some snakes. But it's also a constrictor, like other snakes, which doesn't normally happen in nature. With with the two, the uh, but this is a supernatural serpent, and it's flashing and thrashing and rushing about, and she pounces in there, and here's a good couple pages of some wonderful action great visual storytelling on the way they're doing this and, and the action it's thrilling and dynamic as they're working together even using chest of gold to smash the damn thing and it doesn't work and finally kind of he's got an idea he takes off again look at the, the great detail in the face all the the, the the setting everything is just beautifully rendered and the actions again are beautiful face on it and the way the flowing of her hair the way, the way he did that the hair he kind of gets up on this ledge while the thing is coming for Sonia uh oh and then pounces on it he pounces on it 
and thrusts his sword right through its skull, slaying the beast, and with its death, it returns to the uh, to the golden tiara. And I like this this here because you can see that he's he's staggered from the exertion, the exhaustion of fighting that that beast, but you can still see the power in his, in his stance. And she, and this is where she re reveals that she had been hired to recover this particular little item, and she was get, had been given this little incantation she was supposed to say, which which goes back to when King Cole thousands of years before fought the serpent men it was a an, an enchantment this was a, a that was that would reveal the um the the presence of the evil serpent man you just say ka namaka lajarama and it's some some kind of special chant so ah she for, and she forgot to say it as soon as she touched it so it didn't work she waited too long so okay well, let's get the hell out of here uh, so she goes first down the down the rope. When she gets down there, she lights it on fire, and it, it's this little strike a light, um, kind of like a little tinder box, but it looks a lot like some kind of stylized um, ancient version of uh, a cigarette lighter. Lights the silken rope, and it whoop, starts bursting into flame. She takes off while Conan is falls and he's stunned. He confronts her when she gets on the horse. <laughs> said, now you're going to pay for what the what you promised. He said, no, no man will ever. This is when she first reveals her her uh, her pledge uh, of never loving a man who has not f defeated her uh, fairly in 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 single combat. And then she kicks him out of the way and takes off. But said, but. Oh, but don't feel too badly about being used, Barbarian. I really did rather like you in my way. And now I'm off to Padishah. Goodbye. So she liked him. And she, he takes, she takes off. Well, crap. <laughs> he got nothing out of the deal. A night of battle. <laughs> and he didn't even get any of the treasure up there. <sighs> He's ticked off at himself. Well, I better head back to the barracks, <laughs> and that's and that is the end of that story. That was a, a war, I think it was a wonderfully told story. It hits it hits several tropes, but it's done well. It is well written and magnificently drawn. Now here in this book, you go on to uh, other stories at, at other times. This is a splash pa uh, splash page. Knight of the Dark God. With this uh, with this wonderful illustration, uh, penciled by uh, Gil Kane and and inked by uh, Neil Adams. And that's some. I can see here some lovely stuff. I'm gonna get. Ah, there we go the next one. Then we get here to uh, some some pinup stuff here. Red Sonia. This is a. Uh, uh, Wonderful drawing. This is by Esteban Morato, who I know best from his work in the uh, the the War and Horror magazines of, from about this time. And then here's another one, great one by Dick Giordano, better known for his his work at DC Comics, especially on on Batman and Wonder Woman and such. And then we get the piece de resistance, Frank Thorne's version of Red Sonia, and his his interpretation is what what really made uh both he and she <laughs> uh famous it made him uh, uh fan favorites and really really thrust thrust frank thorne into uh uh, uh fan fan prominence some wonderful stuff and i mentioned earlier about the uh um Ernie Chan inking on on John Buscema art. Here here is uh, not Ernie Chan. This is John Buscema pencils with uh, Alfredo Alcala inks, and his and again his his inks just overpowers the uh, John Buscema pencils because you'd be hard pressed to tell that that was was uh, uh, John Buscema. So that's what I've got for yeah I've got a, I've got a better copy of this, but I want this book fortunately. But, but that's what we've got for Conan the Barbarian, Song of Red Sonia. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a good, I think it was a wonderful story, beautifully told, and both visually and 
construction. And so thank you for joining me. Please like, share, subscribe, uh, share with your other sword and sorcery friends, as well as comic book friends. Leave a comment. And remember, comics are art.